Hi, this is Andy and Denny. We're members of the Customer Outcomes Group here at ServiceNow, uh, where we focus on implementing our security operations products. We've put together some content here today in our series called The More You Know. Specifically, we're going to cover the interactions between ServiceNow SecOps, vulnerability response, configuration compliance, and the ServiceNow CMDB. We've put this content together for a number of reasons. The vulnerability response product in particular has evolved significantly since its initial inception. There are certain components, especially with the interactions with CMDB, uh, that have changed. There are also some common misconceptions that we hear in the field with regards to the interactions between uh, vulnerability response, configuration compliance, and the ServiceNow CMDB, along with where the CMDB IRE component fits in. We're also looking to clarify some of the dependencies and moving parts within SecOps and the CMDB interactions. We'd also like to show you the interactions between SecOps and CMDB in a step-by-step -step walkthrough. To kick things off, let's go over some key terms. CMDB, that is our configuration management database. Think of that as your central area where you store, you track, and you manage assets, devices, right? Ownership relationship details. A configuration item, or what we call a CI. That's a representation of a single entity and environment. That may be something physical, such as a server. It might be something logical, such as a instance of a database server, or it might be something conceptual, such as a relationship or a service. CMDB IRE. IRE stands for Identification and Reconciliation Engine. This is one of the ways we maintain the integrity of the CMDB. The IRE is what is used to control data inserts and updates within the CMDB. Discovered item, that is a SecOps component. Think of the discovered item as a representation of a host from a third party security tool, such as a vulnerability scanner like Qualys, Rapid7, Tenable. And the discovered item points to a corresponding CI in the CMDB. That might be an existing CI that we did a successful lookup on, or that might be a CI that we've created because a representative CI did not exist in the CMDB. And really think of the discovered item as the glue between our security tool and the CMDB. It's what stitches the two together. Let's move into some key concepts. So as you can see on the diagram here, we have on the left our external tools or asset inventories. Uh, these are what feed into the ServiceNow CMDB. As this information is brought into the CMDB, the IRE, think of the IRE as our, our interface. That is what controls the inserts or the updates. So that controls creating new CI records and updating attributes on existing CI records. On the right side, we've got our security tools that could represent things like our vulnerability scanners. If you look here, the third party scanner is what creates the discovered item. And the discovered item is what is used to consume data from the CMDB. As we mentioned before, this is the the glue or stitching together, right? The discovered item is what puts these two together, your CMDB and your security tool. As we bring in security data into ServiceNow, we initially start by ingesting that information. That information may contain simply the host from a third party security tool, like a vulnerability scanner. That information may also contain the host and the identified vulnerabilities on those hosts. But we, we start at the same point, we, we, we ingest that information. The next step is to determine, have we seen that host before? Do we know what corresponding CI in the CMDB we should use for that host? If we haven't seen that host before, we move into our lookup or CMDB CI lookup process. Here is where we actually say, based on the host that came into service now, how do we find a matching CI in the CMDB? We may use certain identifying attributes like the DNS name or a fully qualified domain name or an IP address. If we're unable to successfully look up a CI in the CMDB, we then move into what we call our unknown scenario. 
And that is where we, we would actually create a new CI in the CMDB to track that host. There are some common misconceptions that we hear in the field with regards to the SecOps and CMDB interactions. The first one is SecOps CI lookup roles are the only way to match a host from a third party security scanner to a corresponding CI in the CMDB. And actually, there are really two ways. Yes, the first one is the uh, SecOps CI lookup roles. However, we also have the IRE identification roles. The next is when we can't find a CI in the CMDB with the lookup roles, we simply just create a new CI in the unmatched CI class. This was true in early generations of the VR product where we tried to look, a, look for a CI in the CMDB, we couldn't find a matching CI and we would create one. However, in the new and the current generation of the SecOps applications, we no longer use the unmatched CI as the primary home for, for the unknown scenario. We still use the unmatched CI class. Uh, that is for if we try to create a CI with the IRE feature, and there's an error condition that we run into. But primarily, there are two new classes that we create CIs in. The first is the unclassed hardware, and the second is the incomplete IP. The next is reclassification of CIs created by SecOps has to be performed by hand. In other words, if we load a host in from vulnerability response and there's no matching CI, we'll create a CI. At some point in the future, uh, when the real CI comes into the CMDB, there is a way that that can be automated to reclassify the CI that was created by our security tools. The last is uh, SecOps will not update attributes on existing CIs in the CMDB. Uh, in other words, we're not going to step on the toes uh, of CMDB. It's actually not quite true. There, there is a notable edge case where SecOps may in fact update a particular attribute, such as an IP address attribute, the operating system attribute, on an existing CI. We'll dive deeper into these misconceptions as we get into our scenario walkthroughs. Let's break down the scenarios that we're going to step through here. The first is a host brought in from a third-party security tool and we successfully match to a CI in the CMDB with the SecOps CI lookup roles. In this case, uh, we never interact with the IRE. The second scenario is going to be, we bring in a host from a third-party security tool, and unfortunately, we don't match to a CI in the CMDB, so we have to create a new CI in the CMDB. In this case, the winning interaction is actually IRE, is IRE will create that new CI. The third scenario is where we bring in a host from a third-party scanner, and we don't match to the CI with the SecOps CI lookup roles, so we pass, pass it on to IRE. IRE, before it creates a CI, will actually do its own lookup. And in this third scenario, though it is an edge case, it is possible that IRE will match to a CI in this situation will prevent the creation of a duplicate CI. The fourth scenario is where we bring in a host from a security tool and there is no corresponding CI, so we create that CI. In other words, uh, vulnerability response is first in the door. Now, at a future date, your CMDB discovery tool brings in a corresponding host. What will happen here is IRE will prevent the creation of a duplicate CI. And in fact, what it will do is reclassify the host that was created by our security tool to the right place. Denny is going to walk us through each of these four scenarios in a step-by-step -step sequence. Over to you, Denny. Thanks, Andy. In scenario one, I'll be going over when a host brought in from a third-party scanner is successfully matched to a CI in the CMDB using the SecOps CMDB CI lookup rules. Step one involves a discovered item lookup, which is used to help us determine whether SecOps has seen this asset before. The lookup tries to find an existing discovered item with a source ID matching to the host ID provided by the scanner for this asset. In this scenario, a match was not found because this is the first time we are ingesting this new asset. In step two, a lookup occurs using the SecOps CI lookup rules. 
Each active role is evaluated based on the attributes of the host to find a matching CI in the CMDB. The rules are executed in a specified order. And when a rule returns a single CI, the CI is identified as the matching CI and the other rules are skipped. In step three, a CI record was found in the CMDB for the corresponding host. Now, after a successful lookup, a new discover item is created using the host ID from the asset as the source ID for the discovered item. The discovered item will also contain the various attributes of the host that were available from the scanner. Because the discovered item record has now been created for this host and associated to a CI in the CMDB, subsequent ingestions of this host will complete here at step one with a discovered item lookup and no longer require the SecOp CI lookup rules to run for this host. Scenario two covers when a host is brought in from a third-party scanner without matching to a CI in the CMDB. In this scenario, a new CI will be created. Step one is similar to scenario one where the host ID is being looked up against the discovered items table. And again, since this is the first time the asset has been ingested, there's no matching discovered item. Step two, SecOps CI lookup rules are invoked and each rule is being evaluated based on the attributes of the host. As we move on to step three, all the SecOps CI lookup rules have been evaluated and no matching CI was found in the CMDB. In step four, the host data is now passed over to CMDB IRE and the IRE identifier rules are invoked against the hardware class. Steps five and six shows IRE performing a lookup against the CMDB using the name of the host and no matching host was found. Now, as we move on to step seven, at this point, IRE creates a new CI record. The target tables for creating CIs from IRE are the unclassed hardware, incomplete IP, and unmatched CI. In this scenario, the CI was created in the unclassed hardware table. The CI is created in this table if IP address plus Additional information in the host information that is received from the scanner contains data such as the host name, DNS, NetBIOS, or the MAC address. The CI is created in an incomplete IP address class if only the IP address is available. There's also the unmatched CI class. In earlier releases of vulnerability response prior to version 12.1, unmatched CIs were created in this class. This class is still used now in cases where IRE ran into an error while trying to create the CI. After the CI is created, a new discovered item record is created associating the host from the scanner with the newly created CI. Scenario three covers when a host is brought in from a third party scanner and matched to a CI in the CMDB via IRE identification rules. This is a less commonly seen scenario because in most cases, if a matching CI exists in your CMDB, your CI lookup rules should ideally find that first before the IRE lookup is invoked. However, there are some edge cases where this may occur depending on how your CI lookup rules are configured and your CMDB data. So it is still important to understand how this scenario may impact your CMDB in case it occurs. In step one, discover item lookup occurs where no matching discover item was found. Step two, the SecOps CI lookup rules are invoked. And in step three, all SecOps CI lookup rules have been evaluated and no matching CI was found in the CMDB. In step four, host data is passed over to CMDB IRE and the IRE identification uh, rules are invoked. Step five, IRE performs a lookup against the CMDB using the name of the host and a matching CI was found that is a Windows server. In step six, once a match is found by IRE, IRE will update the CMDB CI attributes using the available attributes for that host that were provided by the scanner. Some examples of CI attributes that may be updated are the OS, IP address, and the FQDN. This example shows how the CI looked before IRE updated some of the attributes with the data from the scanner. And we can see here attributes that were changed highlighted in red. 
there are cases where you may not want the scanner to update the attributes on the CIs. And in order to prevent that from occurring, reconciliation rules can be created for the discover sources that curate or update CIs in the CMDB. And that will allow you to configure the precedence for which source has the ability to update this data. Details of these steps are available in this knowledge base article listed here. As with other scenarios, after this lookup process occurs, a new discover item is created and, and associated to the CI is the host from the scanner. In this case, the discovered item state will reflect the state of matched. However, the discovered item CI lookup rule will be empty because the match was done using IRE identifier rules rather than the SecOps CI lookup rules. In scenario four, we will be assuming that an unclassed hardware CI has already been created. This is a CI that has already gone through the lookup process and was created by IRE as an unclassed hardware. This often happens when a CI was first brought into ServiceNow via a third-party scanner before your discovery source. So in this case, SecOps is first in the door. We will be going over how the CI can be automatically reclassified in the future, preventing the creation of a duplicate CI. In step one, we have a host that comes in from discovery or another IRE source. Since this is not a SecOps VR source or a configuration compliance source, it doesn't have to go through the SecOps lookup process. Instead, this host payload gets passed to the CMDB IRE and starts here. Steps two, IRE performs a lookup on the CMDB to find a CI using IRE identifier rules and doesn't find a match in existing CI classes such as Windows Server and Linux Server. But in step three, IRE continues searching the CMDB and does find a match for the incoming host in the unclassed hardware table. This match is based on the name field. In step four, IRE reclassifies the CI that was originally brought in by the scanner and moves the CI out of the unclassed hardware and into the Windows Server class. This is done through leveraging the IRE identifier rules, where in this case, the name of the unclassed hardware CI matched the incoming name from IRE. Then finally, in step five, IRE enriches the CI with incoming details from the discovery data source. You can see here how the CI looked when it was first created from the scanner source and how it looks after it was reclassified and updated by the discovery source. The OS is now populated and the class has changed from unclassed hardware to Windows Server. The discovery source has also changed from VR Qualys to discovery. That was great insight into the four scenarios that we called out here with the interactions between SecOps and CMDB. To bring us home, let's summarize what we've discussed. Number one, there are multiple lookups involved in the interactions between SecOps and CMDB, and those, those lookups operate in a sequence. The first is we have our discovered item lookup, right, which works with the source ID from the upstream tool. We also have our SecOps CI lookup rules, which have their own ordered logic. And we also have the CMDB IRE identification rules, and in particular, the hardware rule. The next is SecOps can update attributes on existing CI records. It is an edge case, but it is possible. And there are two components to that. So the first is the CMDB IRE identification rules, again, on the hardware table. And there's also the, the knowledge article that we're going to share that covers the IRE data source rules, which allows you to configure the precedence of which a particular source can update an attribute on a CI. For example, you might want to have um, a discovery source, you know, favored over Qualys for updating the operating system on a Windows server. And lastly, in scenarios where we have hosts coming into the CMDB, from a security tool or application like vulnerability response. And we in fact create those CIs because we couldn't find a matching CI on day one. It is possible that at a future date, when your CMDB discovery tool comes in, those CIs can be reclassified appropriately. In other words, they may start out as unclassed hardware CIs, and then they may move to the Windows Server CI class. That works with the CMDB IRE identification rules, in particular, the hardware rule, where we focus on the name attribute.
thank you everyone for your time. We'll be sharing some of the links that we've been discussing here as part of the content. Bye-bye.